Hello and welcome to the United Stand. This is your Manchester United Transfer News Daily where we talk all the latest United Transfer News and give it that real fan opinion. Lots to talk about today. Skriniar, Koulibaly, Militao, but also Brooks and Taram. A bit left field to some of you, but very relevant. But let's start off with Skriniar because there is some categorical uh, updates issued in relation to him from Inter Milan, basically saying Manchester United cannot afford Skriniar and he won't be going anywhere. You know what? I think some people will start to to worry about that. But I I just think, you know what? Inter Milan are the the target because they've got Skriniar and their fan base are the parents. Now, of course... Inter Milan may well say, we're not interested in you, Manchester United. And the parents are like, good, good, good little girl. But reality is, you don't know what's going on on the phone. They could be saying, meet me me around the back in 10 minutes because we want to get it on. So, you know, look, what goes out publicly can sometimes be done for fans. It could be put out publicly. They could be absolutely baiting us. They could be saying, you can't afford him. And we, uh, so that we go... Yes, we can. Who knows? Skriniar would certainly be, if you look to that game against Spurs at the weekend and you drop Skriniar in and you take Phil Jones out, then Manchester United would not have had half the chances against them because Skriniar would bully Kane instead of Kane bullying Phil Jones. But he will be expensive. Will this board spend? I can't answer that. You can't answer that. We know Ollie's doing a great job. We know some of the players that we've got at the moment are doing a great job. But will the board give the manager and the fans, the money that needs to be spent. We'll find out. We'll have to wait and find out. With regards to Cooley Barley, a couple of updates there. We spoke about him yesterday. Fabrizio Romano, who is a journalist, uh, uh, I think he works for Demarzio, actually. He's quite good. He was very good in the summer about Liverpool. Um, he, he he actually broke about the screening story. That's where I read it. And he, somebody in the reply said, what are the chances of Cooley Barley coming to United this month? He put 0%. Read into that what you like. But I think when a... When a when a when a when a journalist who gets things quite right sometimes to say zero percent, that's gonna you know that's a massive massive amount of uh, crap he's gonna get if Koulibaly does come to us. So, look, I think in relation to the centre back situation, it, it's difficult, isn't it? But what what I want to say about this is that when Mourinho was manager, um, there was talk of us having transfer targets lined up. For January, when Oli was asked about transfers a couple of weeks ago, he said they'll have been working on the deals for January a long time before he came. So where are the deals? Um, that's what I would say. Why, why, why have we put the handbrake on? And, and it's not acceptable. If we miss out on top four by a couple of points because Oli's had got to do this job with what he's got, I think that's massively, massively unfair. When they were clearly going to spend money if Mourinho had stayed, they should still do it. You can't gamble with Champions League football. Go and get the players and go and get the signings done. And what I would say about that is, if Skriniar is not going to happen, if Koulibaly is not going to happen, where does that leave us? It leaves us with sticking with what we've got, which I think is a massive risk. Eric Bay is reckless. Phil Jones is a calamity. Chris Smalling's good in the air, but bad on the floor. Lindelof's the only decent centre-back we've got. Rojo's burning his toast in Argentina, as I've said before. So where does that leave us? It leaves us a couple of options. We could go for Manolas, who is now under the guidance of Mino Riola, his agent, who has a release clause of six, £36 million in the summer. We could save £45 million now and try and get it done. I'd rather we did that than nothing. Or we could go with Edar Militao, the Porto centre-back that a lot of people are looking at. The trouble with Militao is, is that if he'd been playing yesterday, or sorry, on Sunday against, um, against Spurs, it feels like yesterday, um, what a result. But if we'd have played Militao with Lindelof at the weekend, we would have had the same problem. Harry Kane would have bullied Militao because he's he's not particularly tall. He's not particularly good in the air. He's a potentially very good centre-back, but he isn't the dominant centre-back that we need. So paying his release clause of around £50 million, yeah, we get a potentially really good centre-back for the future, but we don't get the domineering centre-back that we need. So I'd, I think that Manolas would be the one that I'm now starting to think if we're going to do any centre-back business... It's either going to be massive amounts spent on Scrinny or Koulibaly to make Napoli or Intercell, or we force the hand of um, Roma with Manolas. But I do think we need a centre-back. That's where I sit on this. I, I, I firmly do. And um, I hope that we do go for one. I want to talk about Football Index. Link in the video description a little bit later. But uh, remember, if you want to have a go on that, the link's in the video description. You've got to be over to A18. And please do gamble responsibly. But let's now move on um, to... Um, Marcus Taram, who is Lillian Taram, the French World Cup winner, formerly of Juventus, um, he's his son. 
And apparently Manchester United sent scouts to take a look at him at the weekend. Now he's a striker. He's six foot two. I'm not going to profess to know loads about him, but Spurs and Arsenal have been linked to him. And Manchester United apparently sent scouts to watch him at the weekend. He plays for Gwyn Camp in uh, France. I've probably pronounced that wrong. But um, I don't know loads about him other than he's six foot two, which is quite tall for a striker. He's 21 and a half, so he's not like his, you know, he's not like his 15 or 16, like some of the players that we sign. Um, and from what I've seen him, he's fast, he's very powerful. I think he's scored seven goals in 14 games for quite a mediocre French league side. So it's interesting that United would be looking at somebody like that. And it just made me think a little bit about, and it's probably totally coincidental, but when we bought Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, unless I'm mistaken, he wasn't like 16, 17. I think we bought Solskjaer around 20, maybe early 20s, and here we are looking potentially at a striker who's 21. Instead of going for like, they're getting, they've got the potential to be great, but they're 17, 8, 8, 16 at the moment. We're going for somebody who's actually, you know, maybe we can bring him in with Rashford. This is what I was talking about a few weeks ago about Timo Werner. Timo Werner would be a decent signing. And everyone was like, oh, well, you want Rashford to be a number nine. I do, but we do need two strikers. And I think when you look at Lukaku... Is he going to be happy to sit on United's bench? No, I think already he doesn't look happy. I don't think his performance against Spurs was anywhere near good enough for a player that's meant to be coming on, busting a gut and trying to win his place back. But if Marcus Rashford's going to be the number nine, I think we need another Marcus Rashford, which is easier said than done. But what I mean by that is I think we need another 21-year-old, another player that can learn with Rashford and share the load. I think if you keep Lukaku or you buy another top striker, then maybe that top striker's got to play like a Cardi. But if you bring somebody in around Rashford's age with Rashford's development, they can share the role together and nobody, there's no, nobody's nose has ever put out a joint there. So maybe there's something in that Taram. I don't know loads about him, but he's certainly tall, quick, can score a goal and you know what? Get rid of Rashford, get rid of Lukaku, bring Marcus Taram in. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I think it's the sort of striker we should be looking at, to be honest. Someone to share the load who's around the same age. I'll, I'll be very happy with that. Another player we're looking at. Now, this might surprise people. This was in the sun, so take it with a pinch of salt. £40 million, David Brooks, Bournemouth, another 21-year-old. They signed him from Sheffield United. He's had a few caps for Wales, um, so he's playing under Ryan Giggs. I think he's been playing on the right midfield, right sort of right wing, right midfield for Bournemouth a lot. Tricky, good player, and United are probably are apparently interested in as are Spurs. It's interesting because I've not heard as being linked to him at all. Um, I think a lot of people will go, oh, oh, oh yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, I've seen him a bit on Match of the Day and that, and apparently United are interested in him. Right midfielder. So, you know, again, I think we all want Douglas Costa. We want Leon Bailey, but there we have a Bournemouth player. And we all talk about how good Bournemouth are. 21 years of age, Premier League experience this season, doing quite a good job. United might be interested in him. I mean, to be honest with you, again, he's not a player... I've seen loads of. I've certainly seen more of him than Marcus Taram, which is nothing. But it's in, these are the sort of signings. They just remind me a little bit of the influence that maybe Sir Alex Ferguson has had and is having on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. That we're looking at these sort of signings that are, you know, they're not the sensational signings. Because to be honest with you, Sir Alex Ferguson never really made sensational Pogba signings. I mean, I think the most high profile signing I remember um, Sir Alex making off the top of my head was probably, I mean, Veron was a big signing, but it didn't work out. Roy Keane was a big signing, but he was from the Premier League uh, and we broke the record for him. So, you know, a lot of our signings under Sir Alex were potential, but with a bit of background behind them. So I think that's that's quite interesting. I mean, there's probably nothing in it, but it is quite an interesting one with uh, with David Brooks of Bournemouth. So give us your thoughts on what you think about that. Um, Coutinho talking about being tempted for Manchester United. I'll be honest with you, Coutinho, I'm not tempted to take you at United. You're ex-Liverpool. I don't want you. You're a Barcelona flop if you leave as well. We don't. They're not the sort of signings we need. And of course, Coutinho is better than David Brooks, but I'd rather have David Brooks because... At least he's not an ex-Liverpool player who's, you know, only leaving Barcelona because they don't want him anymore. I don't. I think those sort of Di Maria signings need to be in the past for United. We shouldn't be taking chances on players that have flopped at bigger clubs. We're trying to build something, and we need 
We need people who are hungry. We don't need people who are looking for a, another payday. And I don't want Coutinho at United. I really, really don't. Just talking about, um, just to give you a little bit of positivity, and you can take it however you like, but there is somebody on Twitter. I think he's at Lawman Top 20 or something like that. A lot of people follow him. A lot of people think he's you know credible when he talks about uh, transfers. To be honest, I'm not going to say either way. Um, but he did tweet something out yesterday about um, Alexa, get me a Santa back. Hashtag IKN, which is in the know. That's something I do know. So, you know, I, the point with Manchester United is it's the 14th of January. We're not even halfway through until a day and a half. Uh, 31 days divided by two is 15 and a half so we're 14 days in we're not halfway through this transfer window yet and correct me if i'm wrong but the sanchez deal was done towards the back end around the 20th it started to kick off so there's still time in this transfer window for united to do things and i think that at the moment we just got to watch and see but i think that i think we will do stuff and as i say fellaini he could go very very soon what did i say last night there's reports from united that that, that the attitude of Fellaini has dropped drastically since Mourinho has left, that Solskjaer is not impressed with him, and he could be shipped out this month, maybe on loan with a permanent move, which would be at, that that would be like a signing to get him out of our club. It's one of Deadwood FC. There's talk of McTominay going on loan, which I think, look, I'm not saying sell McTominay, but he needs game time because people keep saying McTominay's got something about him. We as fans are not seeing it. So get him in the championship, get him in a club, get him playing every week and let's see if he has got something about him because Twan CB has. He's playing week in, week out for Villa and everyone loves him. So get McTominay, get him into Preston North End or wherever and let's see what he's all about because he ain't going to get much game time at United this season. So get him out, I think. And what's going on with people like Darmian? Maybe we can move them on. But... As I was on about, link in the video description, Football Index. I bring this in for a purpose. One, play it. It's a good game. I enjoy it. Uh, links in the video description. You've got to be over 18 and please do gamble responsibly if you want to do it. It's a stock market. It's just like a stock exchange game where you can buy um, shares in real life players and they will go up and down. But I bring it in for a reason because obviously that's my portfolio. I was looking at the top 200. That's my portfolio. I've been playing this for about a month and I'm already in profit of £102 because that's my portfolio and you can see the profit I've made on players. Now I bought Higuain on Friday. I bought five shares in Higuain for about £2.50 each and already I've made £1.35 in a couple of days and that is because Higuain is linked to Chelsea and two reasons I mention it. One, Chelsea are meant to be in for Higuain and Douglas Costa. They're looking at him now, apparently, because they want a striker to solve their problems. We're Manchester United. We're trying to chase Chelsea down. We need a centre-back. We ain't got one yet. Chelsea are six points ahead of us. We're chasing them down, and they're trying to improve a weak area for them, which is striker. It just shows why we should be spending money. But in relation to football index, prices will go up by performance on the pitch, but also, more importantly, in January by links to transfers in and out. So Higuain at the moment, he is like, he's gone up to three pounds a share from around 270 a share because if I click on him, I can't do it on there. Um, if he goes to Chelsea, that price will go up even more. And if he starts banging in, I think he'll go up to around five pound a share by the end of the season, which is obviously profit. So I've got a lot of United players, their prices are going through the roof. Pogba, I think Sanchez will continue to rise. Rashford, I've made 50 quid on Rashford. I bought him at 4.65 a share. He's up to 9.73, and I think he'll go up even more. Martial the same. He's moving up. Um, I've got Aubameyang as well, but uh, top 200 at the moment. You might recognise some of them. Gabriel Hayes. Gabriel Hayes has obviously scored. Links in the video description for that. Oh look, there's Marcus Taram. <laughs> well, there you go, Marcus Taram. We were talking about him. Uh, his price is on the rise because he's being mentioned in the transfers. So uh, links in the video description for that. You've got to be over 18 to play it and uh, do gamble responsibly if you're going to do it. I mean, at the end of the day, if you put a tenner on United to win and they don't win, you lose a tenner with football index. If you put 20 quid and I would say go in with about 20 quid to start off with because shares on players can fluctuate between. You can get some players for three quid, but a share in Pogba is 16. But it, I think it will keep going up. Um, but their prices drop. You're not going to lose your whole 16 quid. If his price starts to drop, sell him, get somebody else. 
build it up. A um, bit like real life FIFA Ultimate Team. There's forums and all sorts. I really, I really am enjoying it. And like I say, I've, I've done all right out of it over the last few weeks because I do look on the forums and I do understand my football. And you can sort of predict, like with Higuain, that his price is going to go up. So link in the video description for that. But get in the comments. What are your thoughts about Marcus Taram? Is that the sort of strike you think we could get rid of Lukaku and have him working alongside Rashford as a 21-year-old? David Brooks at Bournemouth. Would you be happy as him coming in as our right midfielder? Um, and Squinia, Cooley Barley, what does that mean for the centre-back race now? Would you wait till the summer or is it too much of a risk for top four? We need one now. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button, get your comments in and I'll speak to you later. We've got Flex and Rants coming up at one o'clock.